On today's admittedly probably not very long episode of Roland Rambles, we discuss VPNs. Are VPNs good? Are VPNs bad? Do VPNs protect your privacy? Well, this is probably the video that's going to get any potential sponsorship that I would get from a VPN provider nuked. Because the truth is that VPNs don't really do much of anything, with one exception. Now, we need to wind back a little bit, because it's not just VPNs. There's a specific kind of VPN we're talking about. I call them consumer VPNs. Consumer VPNs are the ones that are marketed as protect your privacy, hide your IP address, hide your, hide your stuff online, and so on and so forth. Those are consumer VPNs, you know, private internet access, Express VPN, Nord VPN, and so on. The other kind of VPN, I would call a corporate VPN, just because it's mostly corporate people that use them. But a, a corporate VPN, as I'm calling it, is the kind where you take a computer and you create a virtual private network tunnel from that computer to another network, and the computer can participate as if it's on that network. <coughs> Technically, both kinds of VPN do the same thing. However, when we talk about VPNs, we have to talk about the correct kind, because most people are not attempting to access a private network through the public internet. They're attempting to use a VPN provider to have all of their internet traffic routed to a different external IP address. And that's all that VPNs do. Excuse me just one second. Just had lunch. Sorry. The VPN providers that you pay that have these nice brand names that claim you can hide yourself and maintain your privacy, all they really do is route your traffic to an external IP address that isn't your own. That's it. But, what happens when you use the VPN? Well, let's take an example. Do you know what cookies are? No, not the delicious treat. I'm talking about cookies, as in like browser cookies. A cookie is a piece of information that, you're, that a website instructs your browser to store and then send back with any HTTP requests in the future. When you log into Facebook, for example, or any website, the way that the website knows that you have a login session and that traffic should be associated with that login session is by storing a token, just a string of letters and numbers, in a cookie in your browser that is sent back to the website with every request. What happens when you ask for, say, a picture privately posted to grandma's Facebook profile is your browser sends the request to download that image to show you, but in that request it has the token, which is part of that cookie. That token says, this request is associated with this login session, therefore you should give me the information based on that session. So, because Facebook can see in the table of sessions of people have, that have successfully logged in, that you have a valid login session, and that your request is valid based on your authentication, it should send down the picture. Now, what does this have to do with VPNs? Oh, it has everything to do with VPNs. A VPN just changes which IP address your traffic goes to and from. Therefore, Facebook sees that instead of, say, Spectrum or Brightspeed or whoever, whatever internet provider you use, Instead of Spectrum seeing which internet provider you use as where your traffic is coming from, instead of Facebook seeing that, they see private internet access or ExpressVPN. Why do I keep saying private internet access first? Because that's the one that I would actually say to use if you were to use it for the only purpose. We'll get to that. <coughs> so, when you make the request to Facebook, you're sending a cookie that says, I am Jody Bruchon. I am the Jody Bruchon login account. So it comes from another IP address, but Facebook knows it's you. Any website that you visited prior to logging into your VPN and changing the IP that your traffic goes through, any website that you used that stored a cookie 
with unique identifier information of any sort can now unmask you simply by your, your browser sending that cookie right back to that website on the next visit. If you are using a web browser, VPNs do absolutely nothing to protect your privacy because your browser practically screams, I am this person, I am this person, every time you do anything with it. So, the only way that a VPN helps you is if you're trying to hide your real internet service provider, your real IP address. A lot of people think that hiding your IP address, your real internet access IP address, somehow protects your privacy. It does not because of the aforementioned cookie thing. Plus, any other thing you use to authenticate, anything that requires any kind of authentication, the authentication is proving who you are. Therefore, no matter what IP address it's coming from, you're proving who you are. So, oh, I'm private, I'm hidden, but I'm te literally telling you who I am over this hidden address. It's like, it's like wearing a, an outfit that completely masks your identity and then going, Psst, hey, I'm Jody. Way to go, genius. Now, there is one instance, and only one instance I can think of, where you would actually want to use a VPN, and that is <coughs> if you don't want someone getting your real IP address because in court, your real IP address can be used to figure out who you are, potentially, or at least who the account holder is that's responsible for your internet access. Usually, but not always, that is you. It may not be you, in which case the account holder will get, you know, they'll get asked and probably say, well, these people have access. But the point is, if you're trying to prevent someone from legally, say like the FBI, you know, you don't want to get party vanned by the FBI, do you? Well, you can use a VPN, and a lot of people who do stupid things like bomb threats, for example, will use a VPN to mask the real IP address they're working from, so that instead of getting an IP that ties down to an account holder, which often also means tying down to a specific area, you just get a VPN, you know, computer in a data center somewhere, and if it's a no-log VPN provider like private internet access, well, the trail kind of dies there. Of course, if you have cookies and you're using a browser over the VPN and all that, guess what, genius? Your browser is sitting there screaming your identity anyway. So thinking that a VPN protects you is pretty bad operational security, just period. You have to do very specific things, you know, browsing like an incognito mode or whatever with JavaScript and cookies turned off and all this other stuff. It is so complicated to actually hide yourself on the internet. And as soon as you log into some account, it's done, dude. You have pierced that veil. And that information can be used to potentially associate you with the other behavior. Like if, if let's say that you let's say that you emailed a bomb threat using some anonymous mail service, right? <coughs> emailed a bomb threat to your middle school because for some reason you're 12 and what is this? You email this bomb threat to the elementary school, right, or the middle school, I'm sorry. Um, I assumed you were younger than you were. And you're trying to hide what you did. Well, if you email it and then you log into another account somewhere using the same VPN, the same session, the same IP, well, if you log into your Google account, it's possible that the feds ask Google, hey, could you, um, could you give us a list of all the Gmail or Google accounts that were used that, that had traffic from this IP address at this VPN provider at this time? And they could, and it's not definitive because there could be hundreds of people coming from the same public IP on that VPN provider, but it does mean that now instead of the whole internet being where they have to figure out where you're from, oh, well now they've got, they've got like a, a list of a hundred people. And one of those people's you. So, yeah, VPNs are kind of useless. Now, let me tell you the one area, you know, you have to have masterful OPSEC to avoid getting associated when it's law enforcement coming after you. <clears throat> there is, however, one area where it makes absolute sense to use a VPN, and it's a very good thing, and it does protect your privacy sufficiently, that, and you should definitely do it. And that is when you use a VPN 
to hide your real IP address so that when you're pirating music, movies, software, etc., and the copyright rights holder doesn't like that, you know, say, the game company that wants you to install anti-cheat, uh, multiplayer, whatever, you know, viruses and stuff on your computer, and you're going to get a pirated version that doesn't do that, you want to hide from them that you're the real person, because if they get your IP address, they will send a DMCA takedown notification to your internet service provider, and your internet service provider knows who you are at that IP address in that time, so they will send you a nasty gram, possibly cut you off and force you to call them to beg to get connected back up and say, I'll never do it again, Mr. Mr. Uh, Time Warner or whoever internet provider person. I'll never do, I'll never do it again. I, 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 it, it was a mistake. I promise I'll be a good boy. <clears throat> and then you run out and get a private internet access subscription instead because that's the smart thing to do. By the way, I'll put my referral code down at the bottom so you can uh, give me a kickback if you want PIA. The right way to do it is to get a VPN provider. See, because if they send the DMCA notification to the VPN provider, they'll just throw it in the trash can. And if they're a no-log provider like private internet access, then they don't have a record of who is using it anyway. So they can't even forward it to anyone, so it just gets thrown in the trash. Install the VPN, you request port forwarding, you set up your torrent program so that the only network interface that it uses is the interface for your VPN connection. Um, in the case of private internet access, you should be using WireGuard, not OpenVPN, and you should be setting, um, say, Qubit Torrent, whatever, that's the one that I like, um, to use the network interface, in this case, WGPIA0, which stands for WireGuard Private Internet Access. And that way, your torrent client will only ever bind to the VPN interface. It will never work over the public internet. So if your VPN connection drops or you shut it down, your torrents just stop talking if they're not behind the privacy of the redirected IP address. And then, of course, you do have to copy your port, it, port forward uh, port into your torrent client every time it changes, and you'll have to just manually check for that. But that's how you can hide your little piracy habit from your internet service provider so you don't get kicked off of your internet service by a bunch of DMCA notification spam from the rights holders not, not liking that you might be torrenting their stuff. And that's the only place that a, that, that a consumer style VPN actually does anything of value, makes any sense. Because it's just really hard otherwise to clamp down your identity. But your torrent client's not exactly coughing up your name. And if you're using this VPN and this port forward and all that, and you're locking it to only use the VPN, then it doesn't leak your, your little um, sailing of the seven seas habit to anybody that can do anything to harm you for it. And that ultimately is the name of the game. So VPNs are garbage. Now, keep in mind, I did say commercial VPNs, which really is just like, if you set up an open VPN connection or whatever, or WireGuard, <coughs> where, for example, I'm in this car, say I got my cell phone, I could set up a VPN connection back to my home router, which would allow me to access, say, my documents on a private home server without exposing it to the public internet. Instead, you'd have to log in through the VPN, which does authentication and encryption, then I could read my private documents from my private server as if I'm sitting at home on a computer at home. Um, that's the, the original purpose for a VPN, but what we call a VPN today, consumer-style VPNs, they're BS, total BS. The only thing they do is change what IP address your traffic comes from, but all the other privacy issues and implications will unmask you extremely easily. Don't be stupid. Don't use a VPN unless you know what you're doing. Um, and, and generally speaking, that's going to be um, high-level um, seven seas sailing, shall we say. Anyway, I hope this has been educational. Again, look in the description for my private internet access referral code. I will put that down there for you. I believe that it gives you a discount and it gives me a, a kickback too. So it's beneficial to both of us. If you do want to use a no-log VPN that has been tested in court multiple times, uh, the FBI demanded logs and they said, we don't have logs to give you. Um, it's in court records. So they've been pretty 
well tested in the legal system to be a no log VPN. Um, otherwise, uh, you know, talk to you later. Hope that you have learned something today. Take care.